Hey guys, it's Silver Seeker, and today we have an awesome video for you. Really excited. We are going to have a guest uh, today on the show. His name is Keith from the Coin Crew. You guys might know him. We've had him on before, and of course, he has his own channel here on YouTube as well. Uh, so, really excited to talk with Keith because Keith is a longtime coin dealer and someone I've known for a very, very long time. Uh, the other day, we were on the phone talking about the video that I released the other day talking about investing in silver, and I thought it would be great to kind of get some feedback from somebody who's been in the field for a long time from an actual coin dealer and just kind of get his perspective on stacking silver, stacking gold, uh, investing in your future through precious metals. And so we're going to get him on here. But guys, really quick, before we get over there, we already have him on the line. But before we get over there, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to go down below, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And of course, click the bell so you don't miss any future video notifications. Okay, guys, here we are with Keith from the Coin Crew. How's it going, Keith? I'm doing okay. How are you doing, Seeker? Good, 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 man. Thank you so much. Like I said, guys, I've known Keith for a long time, so this isn't uh, somebody I met through YouTube, but it's always awesome to have an inside perspective of someone who does this every single day. Uh, Keith has uh, been dealing in coins, what, for 30 years plus? Yeah, plus. Uh, plus? More like about 46 years. More about 46 years? Okay, yes. well. Some something like that. Since I was like eight, I've been in the coin field. Wow, wow, that's yeah. that's crazy. Long time. So you uh, you you don't just collect, but you obviously you invest or stack silver on your own as well. You don't just like buy and sell it, but you actually have your own investments. Yeah, I have just just a few ounces here and there, so to speak. But yes, we do we do stack uh, myself and my wife. We stack quite a bit ourselves. Uh, I do. I like the pretty coins, though. I mean, at heart. You know, a good, nice collectible, you know, dimple dollar or harder date penny. Those are nice. Right. I like those. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who who wouldn't who doesn't like the beautiful stuff? I mean, some of the stuff I show off on my channel, I just I just fall in love with. In fact, the one you sent me the other day, by the way, thank you. Uh, You're welcome. That that was really cool. I I don't know which one I liked more. I don't know if I'd like the Pisces coin or the uh, Poseidon. I'm just saying. <laughs> They're both really good coins. They are. Uh, yeah, Angel's got a couple of those. One of each, rather. Yeah. yeah yeah and speaking of angel you about had a heart attack last night is that correct <laughs> yeah i did <laughs> oh my goodness uh that was really yeah. funny guys there was a video on his channel she she scared him during a live stream it was a lot of fun to watch but let's get into the the meat i know a lot of people don't want to hear all the banter so keith when it comes to stacking gold and silver i mean of course you're a dealer as well so we're going to get kind of both sides but why do you stack for yourself uh, I stack to preserve, I guess you could say, my retirement because the money we have today is not going to hold its value like my silver or my gold. Uh, if I put uh, $10, $20 in the bank in 10, 20 years, that's not going to get me the same amount of product or services that my $10 or $20 worth of silver or gold will give me. And so I feel that's very important. To store my value for my for my retirement as you know i'm getting closer to retirement everybody's got to retire someday right i mean that's what they tell me but i mean you don't have to retire i'm hoping i don't but you know you you don't know it's a question of do you want to retire or are you retiring because you're forced into it well and that's where that's where i stack at because if i'm forced into it i'm gonna have to have something and if i hold a whole bunch of dollars that's that's not going to help me with my retirement, with my living expenses like my silver and gold would. Right. So like if in 15 to 20 years, if you just took, uh, I mean, I don't want to shout out numbers. I don't know. But let's just say, for example, you know, you invest, you took $50,000 and you threw it under your mattress. That $50,000 isn't going to be worth what it is today when you're ready to spend it. No, it won't get you nowhere near. I mean, if. If I had, I'm not an economist or, you know, financial advisor, nothing, but I, I do know that when I was a kid, I could get a candy bar for a nickel and now they're like a dollar. But if I took that dime silver and got me two candy bars, I can still take that dime and get me two candy bars. So that's what investing in silver does for you. It stores your value. I think that's real important. That's actually really good. I've, I mean, we've always done the quarter for a gallon of gas, but that's a good oh, point. Yeah. A nickel got you a candy bar when you were a kid, and a dime is two nickels, and it's silver, so that dime would get you. But you want to know what's weird about those candy bars right now? What's that? When I was a kid, they was twice, maybe three times as big for that nickel as they are for that dollar now. <laughs> you, 
So they're still getting you a little bit here and there. So, yeah. Yeah, I bet. Well, you know, I mean, maybe we don't need to be eating candy. I mean. It's just an example. <laughs> I mean, well, maybe, maybe not me. I got a little bit of weight on me. Well, I was just pointing to my uh, my extra, you know, chin there. <laughs> But maybe we don't need those large candy bars from back then. But I mean, back, you know, it's 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 a valid point, though. I mean, it's even a war nickel, which is only 35 percent silver, whereas a, a yeah. dime is 90 percent silver. Even a war nickel uh, would still get you a candy bar. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Or two, yeah. Right. So, I, yeah, it's I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was just I was agreeing with you. I'm like, yeah, it is crazy. Right. The way the money is. So uh, when it comes to gold and silver, like uh, in the coin shop, like are a lot of people coming in to buy, sell? You get a lot of phone calls. I mean, give us a little bit of insight. Okay, insight. Uh, well, as you, as you know, we, we do operate a shop. And uh, I think we're getting more people coming in buying right now. I think this shortage this time around, I really believe it to be real. Because there are nowhere near the amount of people that used to sell to me selling and I'm even paying up and above spot for silver. Whereas when it was plentiful, I could pay 50 cents back and I always got too much. And now if I pay $3 or more over, I still, nobody wants to sell it. And I think that's just a, um, I guess you could say a, a numerology, so to speak, or whatever, uh, with the population getting bigger, more people wanting silver, and it doesn't come out of thin air. So if more people want the silver, that's going to short the silver. Right. And, and, and what's happening. I mean, not everyone in the U.S. I mean, how, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but, you know, there's a lot of people in the U.S. don't have any silver. And it used to be. It's, it's funny if you think about it. Uh, back when we were on the silver standard, every household in the U.S. had silver. If you had if you had some change in your house every household in the u.s had silver and now how many households still have silver it's not a not right. a lot of no sir yeah exactly i mean every household had silver in the 60s i mean every quarter was silver every dime was silver half dollars were still being used uh, as currency back then and those were silver and you know who didn't have at least a little bit of change around it's it's crazy to think about now but i bet if you walked into i, I wonder how many houses you would have to walk into in today's world to find you know to find one still had silver in it probably one in five one in ten yeah i mean obviously we don't actually all, know that number but yeah no yeah. we don't know it but i mean i i think it's it's 10 or 20 percent at the at the utmost but yeah that uh you was talking about how everybody had silver back then um i read somewhere now i don't know if it's true because again i'm you know i haven't gone to school everything i've learned is ojt type thing but i read and i heard through the grapevine so to speak that when they stopped producing the silver coinage the reason why they stopped was for fear of running out the silver mines because all the countries were producing silver coinage and if they would have kept producing silver coinage they would have ran out anyway and would have had to cut it off at some point because there's just not enough silver out there nowhere near enough no i don't i don't think that's the official reason um i know i know when we went off the silver and gold standard uh, a lot of countries a lot of countries were backing their money on our money and our money was backed by silver and gold and so when those countries started demanding uh you know when those countries started demanding the silver and gold that their money was you know the u.s dollars that they had was worth that caused a shortage i and don't quote me exactly on that you know you can go read the exact so exact history story but you know in essence you know, in essence, they started requesting the silver and gold for the dollar, the U.S. dollars that they held, and we there was no way we would have been able to deliver. No, we couldn't have delivered. Could you imagine because... if they tried to do that? I mean, if could you imagine if they tried to get you know their ounce of silver or whatever, you know, their twenty eight dollars of silver today? If could you imagine if you took every U.S. dollar and then got your silver for it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that there's not enough silver to I don't think to cover all the US dollars that have been printed. Well, even at $28 an ounce, like there's probably not enough silver to cover an ounce of silver no. for every $28 right now. No, I don't think there is. And uh like I said, I I like I said I heard that, but yeah, the, everybody has their official reason. I mean, all the, the government agencies. Yes, I believe more so what you said about them stop printing the silver. I believe that to be more true. But you know what? It does make for a good story, though, don't it? It sure does. 
Sure does. Yeah. Kind of like the it builds uh, up the excitement. Kind of like the uh, the uh, the 1883 Liberty nickel, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. the uh, racketeer nickel that makes for yeah, a good that. Even that though not thing, proven, that makes a good story. It does make a good story, yeah. A lot of people um, did actually plate them. Uh, I heard, now I think I actually read it, that they, they caught the guy eventually that was doing that. There was just one guy, and he had some helpers, so to speak, and he just started passing them off. And I don't remember if I read that in a red book or where. It was one of the numismatic um, magazines I've read that. Gotcha. So, um, what is the sentiment? So you said there's more people buying than selling. What are the sentiment from the people? What are they telling you? Why do they say why they're buying? There's most of the people are, what they're saying is they just don't trust the fiat currency, the government dollar. Now, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but I don't trust the government dollar either. I'd rather have the silver. Right. The only reason I do accept the money for my silver is because I need that currency to pay the bills to buy more silver, uh, because that is the means of trade in today's economic times. But if you go back to, I don't know, uh, ancient Egypt or whatever, the means of trade was gold and silver. Right. They didn't, all their stuff was made with gold and silver. They would trade off pots or coins or whatever that was made out of gold and silver. And I think sometimes copper, if I'm not mistaken, but um, that's another story. But Today, the means is the fiat dollar. And if at some point our fiat dollar ever collapses, we're going to need that gold and silver. I agree with you 100%. And everybody who comes in tells me, I don't trust the dollar. I want the silver. Right. I want the gold. Something fi something physical that you can hold in your hand. Like, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan, even though I do have a little bit, uh, and it lost a lot of value the other day, uh, cryptocurrency. Um, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it, it yeah, it, <laughs> but you know, like this right here, I actually hold this, this isn't going anywhere and it doesn't actually lose value. E even if silver goes down, it doesn't really, you don't really lose till you sell it anyway. But I, you know, I got I, some crypto. Yeah. For free. There you That's go. how much I have faith in crypto. I <laughs> I opened up one of them, uh, what do you call them, uh, Coinbase accounts. Oh, okay. And I opened it up, and they gave me $5 worth of free crypto. It went all the way up to $10, and now it's worth $4. <laughs> That's... I, won't, I won't connect my bank account to it because I'm not a big fan of not being able to touch my money. Yeah, no, I hear you. You can stare at a number that says it's there, but you can't actually hold it. I get it. I get it. And... You know, there's, I think, I think even still with, uh, with the dropping, there's obviously potential if you do it right to make money in crypto, but I mean, that's the same for any stock, but oh, yeah. I think there's from a, a, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of money. I mean, I guess, you know, you just pop that money in there and grab it back out at the right time and you can make boatloads of money in crypto. Right. But I think from a fundamental standpoint, I'll, I'll just stick with this stuff. Yeah. Silver's but, best, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's so the people coming into your shop don't trust fiat. No one's really wanting to sell their gold and silver, which kind of backs up uh, what you just said about them uh, saying that. So when the people do come in to sell, do they say why? Do they say they're selling because they think it's going to go down or do they say they're selling for other reasons generally? Uh, they're usually selling because they need to pay a bill because, as I said, the fiat is the means of currency. There aren't a lot of businesses out there. There are quite a few, but I mean, in the greater scheme of things, there's not a lot of businesses out there that accept silver or gold as a means of transactions. Um, in saying that, yeah, there's just, I mean, I offered a guy like uh, $5 over the other day for silver maple leaves. No, nope, I'll keep them. I'll keep them. It's not enough. I'm like, wow. dude, $5. They had spots too. Wow. And he still didn't want to sell. Five over. I mean, yeah, I figure, dude, I could probably sell them for six real quick, you know? Right. So, sorry about that, sir. That's all right. Okay, well, uh, anything else you want to add uh, about what's going on in the silver and gold market right now or just uh, why you stack or, you know, anything you want to add to it? Well, We'd guys, love to hear from I, you. Yeah, I think, I think you guys should start. Uh, as you know, when I started uh, YouTube here, I started increasing my stacking. Um, and I think everybody should try to stack as much as they can afford without breaking their pocketbook because the silver and gold is not at this time a major means of transactions for consumer goods and products. 
But in the future, I think at some point in time, I think we're going to go back to that to where it is the major form of making a transaction your, for your monetary systems. So, yeah, I started stacking crazy when I started YouTube. I got real crazy. So, wow. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Get that, more, though, man. man. Get yeah. More. Get more. You know, and there's a lot of ways, uh, really quick, I'll just add in before we finish up our video here. There's a lot of ways that, uh, you can add to your stack. You know, a, a lot of people will, will you know, maybe say they may not have money to stack. They don't have money to invest. And those same people might buy two or three lattes at Starbucks every week or, you know, eat eat two or three fast food meals a week or more. I mean, it doesn't take much to, you know, cut out one or two of those a week and throw some aside. I mean, I, you know, a, a good example would be you could walk into, let's say you, you uh, condition yourself that when you walk into a gas station, if you're going to buy that bag of Doritos and that drink, you have to tell yourself, all right, I'm also going to put $5 aside to buy silver with. And if you do that every time you go into the gas station, you're going to, you're paying $5 more essentially for your goal or for your Doritos and your drink, but you're investing that money. You're not throwing it away. So if you just condition your, there's always ways you can find, I think, uh, you know, things that you can do that don't necessarily need to be done. And honestly, not getting an extra soda a week is probably healthier for you anyway. But what I, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, but I guess my point of saying that is it's not like you have to be a millionaire or even have a ton of money to stack. Silver's right now still only 28 an ounce, even with premium, you're 34, 35. It's, it's not like it's a million dollars to throw an ounce aside every once in a while. So go ahead. No, yeah. And I was uh, kind of thinking on the same for you guys that like to enjoy your life and spend a lot of money on going out and drinking or going to the movies or whatnot. If you go out and drink, drink a little bit less when you go out. If you like to drink and you bring it home, you know, instead of going out every time, bring that case of beer or whatnot home or your bottle of fifth. I, I'm not a drinker, so I don't know the terminology for it. But bring it home and uh, cut back how you do it. And just like Seeker here said, take some of that money that you would have spent on that product. You can still go out and watch a movie and you and your your significant other instead of just each getting your own popcorn you get one of the great big popcorns you just consumer shop and then take that extra money and put it into silver because you're not going to miss it you know buy if you can only afford two dollars if you can afford ten dollars buy what you can afford to throw away as with your green bags put it into silver and I can guarantee you in 10 20 years you will not be sorry even if silver goes down you won't be sorry because you would have spent that money on something else. And I don't believe silver is going down, but I just wanted to throw that out there because a lot of people say, oh, I'm investing. If it goes down, I'm losing money. You don't lose money if you don't sell it. And if you hadn't bought it and wasted that money on something else, you've lost more money than you would have lost just buying silver. Exactly. All right, Keith. Well, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the chat. We'll probably do this again in the future, guys. If you haven't uh, if you haven't been over to Coin Cruise channel yet, make sure you go over there and subscribe. There'll be a link down below. Appreciate it, guys, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I did leave a video above. You can check out if you haven't seen it yet. I also want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my awesome channel supporters scrolling right there on the right hand of the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.